everyone. Welcome to today's live stream. I am here today to talk to you about why a dewormer may or may not work on a particular goat. And the very first thing I want to do is to debunk a very common myth that I don't hear as much as I used to. Thank goodness. So it is dying because it's very wrong. Um, but that is, there is a really terrible myth that if you use ivermectin, usually people say if you use it orally, that all the worms, all the barber pole worms will let go of the stomach all at once and the goat will bleed out. And this is absolutely untrue. And when somebody tells you that, it means that they have no clue how the barber pearl worm actually consumes its blood. We talked about this in multiple podcast episodes where I talk to parasitologists because, and I do this, I've asked multiple parasitologists this question because I don't want somebody to say, oh, well, that one person is wrong. So a lot of times I will ask multiple researchers, vet professors, parasitologists, I'll ask them the same question because I want to hear them all say the same answer so that hopefully the more people hear this, the more they believe it. The way the barber pole feeds is that it does not attach itself like a leech and just suck the blood. Maybe that's where that idea came from. Um, but it, it um, scratches and then sucks. So it, it consumes like a drop at a time. And the reason that they can make a goat so anemic is because the barber pole has this incredible ability to reproduce really fast. And if you're not rotating pastures, then your goats could be consuming hundreds of them every day on the grass. And then a goat winds up with thousands of them in their stomach and um, they're able to consume so much blood that the goat becomes extremely anemic. So, you cannot kill your goat with a dewormer there. I get this. I just got this question again, you know, last week from somebody who was afraid that giving their goat a dewormer was going to kill it. And it, that is just not going to happen. There's nothing um, in the mode of action of these dewormers that would kill a goat. Now, of course, they do all have a upper safety limit. Um, Levamisole is the scariest. Um, I have heard of sheep dying when they got four times the label dosage of Levamisole. So you can overdose a goat with it just like any drug. But um, if you give them the amount you're supposed to give them, which for goats, um, you always give goats twice the sheep dosage. You also would give them twice the dosage on the goat safeguard bottle. Um, the only one that you don't give twice the dosage of is the levamisole, and that is only 1.5 times. But there is nothing in the mode of action of a dewormer that will kill a goat. So there is no reason to be scared to give your goat a dewormer when you, um, you, you can't kill a goat with a dewormer. So there's no reason to hesitate when it comes to giving your goat a dewormer. Um, so beyond that, what is the next, um, Lynn, I'm not sure when you, when you popped on, but I was just talking about the fact that like goats don't, um, and I haven't heard about toxicity, um, but they don't bleed out um, because barber pole worms are not attached to the stomach like leeches. Um, and that's a, unfortunately a really common myth with people. Um, so, so then the question that I really wanted to answer with this is why is it, because I get this question a lot and I, I hate it when people ask me this question because I know they've been asking other people the same question, wording it exactly the same. And that is, how does this dewormer work for you? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how it works for me. It doesn't matter how it works for the person across the street from you. Um, the fact is that all the dewormers kill all of the roundworms, which are the ones that make your goats really sick. So barber pole is a roundworm. So is um, the black scour worm, brown stomach worm, all of, the, all of the ones that make your goats really sick are roundworms. And all of the dewormers kill all the roundworms. So if you give your goat twice the dosage of everything other than levamisole, given 1.5 times the sheep dosage of that, um, it will kill the roundworms. And 
Um, it should kill unless you have dewormer resistance. It should kill very close to 100%. And so your goat will be able to recover and be healthy again. So why would it not happen? Because this is what this is the frustrating thing about that question when people are like, oh, how does this dewormer, what's the best dewormer? There is no best dewormer. They're, they should all work equally well. Um, and you don't want to ask somebody how it worked for them because there's so many things that can affect how a dewormer is going to work for one specific goat. Um, so I, in fact, I made a list because I didn't want to want to forget any of these. So um, the first question is how anemic was the goat? So if you have a white eyelid, that means that the PCV is less than 17. And if it's 15 or 16, it should be very easy for that goat to recover. I have had goats that have gone from white eyelids to pink eyelids within two or three days. Obviously, the PCV on those goats was just below 17. It was just below the level that made them white. And so they were able to create enough red blood cells on their own within a couple of days that they were looking pink again. But I've also had a buck that took three weeks for his eyelids to become pink again. And in retrospect, he should have had a blood transfusion. But I didn't know that because I didn't get a blood test on him to see what his PCV was. But it was probably like closer to 10 or maybe even single digits. Um, so those are the goats. Like if you so if you haven't checked your goats for matcha in weeks, um, and then all of a sudden you check it and you're like, oh my God, it's white. Um, maybe it's like eight or nine. And if it's eight or nine and you give that go to dewormer, it might not be enough to help them. Like they're going to die at that point, regardless of whether you give them the dewormer, because the only thing that could save them, um, would be a blood transfusion. So the level of anemia in the goat is really important to know. Um, Rebecca, I'm so glad you asked that. I feel like a broken record. I repeat this so many times, um, but I know most people don't know this. Why does the Safeguard bottle have the wrong labeling for goats? Um, so Merck, which makes Safeguard for goats and cows, submitted exactly the same data to the FDA to get approval for the label on the safeguard. So if you look at the goat safeguard and the cattle safeguard, you will see that the dosage is exactly the same. Um, and in the early 2000s, university researchers, when they started studying parasites, they discovered, because it, it became very quickly, people started saying, oh, safeguard doesn't work, safeguard doesn't work. And so in the early 2000s, university researchers started studying this and they found that the goats actually needed twice as much as the cattle did. And this is true also not only with Safeguard, but also with Valbazin and Ivermectin and Cydectin. Um, and unfortunately for the company, the company cannot just change the label. They would have to go back to the FDA and it would cost millions of dollars for them to get the FDA to approve a new label. Um, and after hearing this from multiple parasite researchers and thinking this can't be true, I actually talked to somebody from the company um, who basically off the record um, said that, yes, that's true. Um, nobody at the FDA really cares that much about goats. And thankfully, the American Consortium for Small Ruminant Parasite Control is pushing the info out there that you need to use twice as much. And so hopefully we can just get that word out there that people need to be using twice as much as what's on the bottle. Because if you use half as much, it's not really going to work. That's why Safeguard got such a bad reputation so fast. And people are like, oh, Safeguard doesn't kill. In fact, somebody told me last week, somebody's like, there's, there's a popular, not going to name it, there's a popular goat group on Facebook that says Safeguard doesn't kill barber pole worms. And this is where that information comes from, is from underdosing. And then when you underdose, that is like the number one route to getting um, dewormer resistance. And so then it doesn't work. Um, and but I use Safeguard. I just used it yesterday. We had our Buck Spa Day um, yesterday. And um, there were a couple bucks that needed a dewormer and they got Safeguard. Um, one of the dewormers that they got. So. 
Um, I did a double dewormer with Safeguard and Cytectin. Um, so anyway, it's really important that we get this information out there so that people stop using it at the wrong dosage. Um, so the second question you have to ask about why is a dewormer not working? Like you gave this go to dewormer and we are assuming here that you do not have dewormer resistance. We're assuming that you gave the correct dose. So many times when people contact me and they have a go that, you know, they just last week, a couple people like their vet told them to use the sheep dosage and they're like, my goat's not getting better. I don't know what else to do. And it's like, well, you underdose them. So now we need to do a combination dewormer um, to try and make this work. Um, so we're assuming that you're, you're given the correct dosage to the goat and that you don't have dewormer resistance. So number one, if your goat is so anemic, you may have to do a um, blood transfusion to be able to save them and doing a blood transfusion. You can, they don't have blood types like people do. You can use any of your goats to do that. Um, so any vet should be able to do a blood transfusion using any of your goats as a donor. That way you don't have to worry about biosecurity. Um, the second question that you need to ask yourself if a dewormer did not work is what kind of resilience does that individual goat have? Some goats unfortunately have very poor resilience and that's a genetic thing. Um, resilience is their ability to um, be able to survive parasites in their system and to even be able to survive a large load. Um, Susan Shaney, and when I just talked to her in one of my podcast episodes about worms, I believe it's the one on um, using dewormers correctly that we did a couple years ago. Um, she talked about an 11 year buck study that they did. And she said some of the healthiest bucks were walking around with 2000 eggs per gram. This is why a fecal does not really help you uh, in terms of needing to know whether or not you need to use the dewormer. Um, you need to be doing FAMACHA and the five point check. And a dewormer is a drug. You only give drugs to sick animals. So if they're failing the five point check, then they need the drug to make them better. Um, but basically not every goat has equal resilience. And um, so some goats can be walking around with 2000 eggs per gram. They can be fat and happy and productive. They can be producing plenty of milk. Somebody contacted me one time with a doe that had 2000 eggs per gram and she was fat and happy and productive. And this other doe that only had 400 eggs per gram was not doing so well. And in fact, she just thought she only had two does and she thought, well, I'll go ahead and take in a fecal for both goats since I'm taking in this one that's underweight and doesn't look good and stuff. Um, and the vet's like, oh, well, this one only has 400 eggs per gram, but that one's got 2000. Oh my gosh, you have to treat her. And she contacted me. She's like, I don't understand. And it's like, that is a perfect example. The goat with 2000 that was fat and happy and productive has excellent resilience. The goat that has 400 eggs per gram and is underweight, not productive, um, not pooping pebbles. She has very poor resilience. The other thing is the other one might have a high load of a roundworm other than barber pole because only barber pole causes anemia and only barber pole causes those crazy, crazy high fecal egg count numbers because the barber pole worm is such a prolific egg layer. So, um, if this is, especially if this is a buck, I am a lot more strict with my bucks when it comes to resilience than I am with my does. If a doe is a really high producer, her resilience is just naturally going to be lower than a buck um, because she's putting a lot of energy into producing milk. But bucks, unless it's breeding season, they really need to have really good resilience. If their resistance isn't great, Good resistance is the ideal, and that just basically means that you're never going to see them get a high parasite load because their body just naturally repels the worms. Um, but the second best is good resilience, that if they do carry a high load, that they are going to not get sick from it. Um, so a goat might have poor resilience. Um, the third reason that a goat might not recover well is because the diet is too low in protein. Um, there's a lot of research that has shown that a high protein diet helps to protect goats against uh, worm problems. And 
when it comes to, so if you have a goat that's very anemic and has lost its body condition and all that kind of stuff, you can't just give it a deworm or put it back out on a larva covered pasture and expect it to do well because it's going to go out there and it's going to be consuming more larva. It's going to be making itself sicker and that's not, it's not going to help. So this is the, this is where like 15, 20 years ago, people thought they needed to keep deworming because they weren't doing rotational grazing. They would give a dewormer and they would stick the poor goat back out there on the same grass. So the goat's eating from its toilet and it's consuming all of this worm larva and it's just reinfecting itself. Like, yeah, you just killed a bunch of worms, but now we're reinfecting them. So, um, so when a goat gets treated with a dewormer, it needs to be taken off of grass, especially if that eyelid is white. If the eyelids are white, you absolutely need to take them off of grass, put them in the barn and put them on a high protein diet, which would be alfalfa or whatever high protein hay you have in your area. If you're down in the Georgia area, that might be a peanut hay. Um, clover is also higher in a, a protein than grass. So you need a good high protein hay and you also need a 16% goat feed. And this would be true even with bucks. Um, and you're only doing this short term. All the problems with bucks and urinary calculi and stuff typically happen when they are consuming too much. Um, and it, it's over time, not just for, you know, ideally like a week, um, maybe two at the most. You know, the most I've ever had to do is that one buck I mentioned took three weeks um, to get him back. And like I said, hindsight is 2020. A blood transfusion, I'm sure would have been the answer for him because you do a blood transfusion you can get them back up to where they should be like you know within half an hour so um make sure that you increase the protein in that goat's diet after deworming and that you take them off pasture so i guess really that's two points um take them off of the grass where there's all the worm larva um and then increase the protein in their diet and then the next thing that is really important is um, minerals. If a goat is deficient in minerals, then their immune system is going to be poor and they are not going to do as well. Um, one mineral in particular that is especially important for parasite resistance is copper. If a goat is copper deficient, then they are much more likely to have a problem uh, fighting off a heavy worm load. So um, if, you know, if you feel like you're doing everything else, uh, look at your minerals. Actually, I always encourage people, look at your minerals anyway. You know, you need to have a good, loose goat specific mineral, not sheep and goat. Sheep and goat has no copper in it. So if you're feeding a sheep and goat mineral, that right there is going to give you problems. You're going to wind up with goats that are copper deficient. So um, make sure that you look at that. And if you've, um, so hopefully this has answered um, a lot of questions about why a dewormer doesn't work. And back to where I started from, like why you don't ask somebody else, like what's the best dewormer? Because there is no best dewormer. They all work if you use them correctly. And if you don't have dewormer resistance and you're doing all the things here on my little list that um, I just listed. So, um, you know, don't ask somebody what's the best dewormer. Don't ask somebody, how does this dewormer work for you? because there are so many different variables in terms of whether or not a dewormer is going to work. So I hope that this has helped to answer some of those questions. Um, if you've got more, post in the comment section below and I will get back to you or Tammy. Tammy is also a certified FAMACHA instructor, um, just like me. And so we'll be happy to respond to your questions. Take care, have a great day, everyone. Bye for now.